What's up, everyone? The Bank of England kind of messed up the hopes for any bulls uh, getting a bounce. See that Governor Bailey says that my message to pension funds is that you only have three days to get this rebalancing done. Obviously, as soon as he said that, the market ended up falling very, very sharply. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the implications of this. We're going to talk about what the next steps are for the SPY, the NASDAQ, the IWM, the bonds, and the dollar. All right, so let's get started with the video. All right, number one tomorrow, we know that on days <clears throat> where FOMC minutes come out uh, at two o'clock or if there's like a Fed meeting, et cetera, et cetera, we know that days like that, they are generally very, very range bound and choppy. All right, so at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, we've got PPI data coming out. And then at two o'clock tomorrow, we've got FOMC meeting minutes. So expect some choppiness tomorrow. <clears throat> All right, so let's start off with the SPY. We entered into two new trades. We got late November spy calls at the money, and then we bought early November buy do calls at the money. So I'm gonna explain both of those. But basically, what I want you guys to see right now on the spy is we broke a most recent low, right? We wicked below it, and then we ended up closing right above the low, right? So this low technically held in terms of candle closes, right? <clears throat> now, I want to take you guys on a journey back here into uh, mid-June, where we also, on November 13th, we made a low, all right? The next day, we wicked below it, all right? And then we ended up closing above the prior low's um, wick, right? And you could see that this low was the first low after months, right? So this is a daily chart, and obviously this happened in June. We weren't at these levels basically until like March, early March of the prior year. All right. So it was almost a year. So we broke that low. We had a bounce right afterward. So basically the point of me showing you that was the next day, right? So the equivalent of tomorrow would be a bounce, a green day, and then another low. So basically um the fact that we did close um at new lows it's a perfect opportunity for them to basically um rip it to the upside for a day or two also given the fact that we have ppi data coming out tomorrow ppi data might not affect or maybe the data might affect so there's two things that can happen number one we can bounce tomorrow because uh, we can assume that this, I don't agree with this, but we can assume that the the uh, the move of the Bank of England basically is not going to affect, <laughs> it's not going to affect the overall market too much. But for the uh, until basically Friday when they decide that uh, the buyback program is going to cease, we can start to rally. So specifically, people can think that, okay, the rally is going to begin tomorrow morning. We should have some sort of a bounce. That is possible. Right, so that is one of the reasons why we could be bullish heading into tomorrow. Also, the second thing is coupled with the fact that the Chinese market just made new lows. So immediately, what I'm trying to say is that we could end up bouncing tomorrow. So my the longer term puts that we were talking about for late November, we could end up bouncing back to 363, 365 area, 100 percent. But at that point, you know, you have to be pragmatically understanding that the only reason why we had some sort of a move to the upside to begin with was that the Bank of England announced that they were doing buyback. And now that that's done, um, the market should continue falling lower. So these puts there, I think we got them for uh, 358 puts. And or 357 puts, sorry. But overall, I think that we should definitely be seeing 350 <clears throat> to 347 sometime in the next few weeks. I could be completely wrong, but it could happen early November, right? So if it is early November, those late November puts are going to do very, very well. And I'm assume so basically everyone is assuming that the move to the downside is going to happen by November. Usually when that's the case, everybody is wrong by at least at least two to three weeks, right? So that's why these November puts should uh, get the job done. And because right now, 
the sentiment of everyone is extremely, extremely bearish, right? When people are very confidently bearish, you have to be wary. Even though things do seem like we're about to fall, even though uh, the Bank of England is saying um, they're going to stop the buyback program, et cetera, et cetera. On the flip side, you can also think that if the Bank of, Eng if the Bank of England is stopping their buyback program, that would cause a cascading drop in the spy potentially, and then that would force um, Fed Powell to start stepping in and either stop increasing interest rates at the same speed or also begin buybacks. So there's a lot of different things to look at. That coupled with <laughs> that coupled with uh, the fact that midterm elections are in early November. A lot to think about, right? But I think the easiest trade to make at these lows, right? We're still holding on to NVIDIA runners. So if the market does fall in the short term, it's good. We're not immediately holding anything for basically, you know, if we do get a strong bounce, our Baidu calls might be fine, but that's not really the, the problem here. That's not really of my concern. Overall, it's going to be very important to see how the PPI data affects, what the FOMC minutes are going to say. And um, that happens at 2 o'clock. We're going to have to see how the CPI data this week comes out as well. And we're basically going to have to see how the market responds into the end of Friday. We, we just don't know what's going to end up happening. So that's why the safest trade is to buy something a few weeks out and pick a bet in a direction. So my bet is that the market and the SPY overall should continue falling lower into the next few weeks. If it isn't in the next few weeks, it should be in the beginning of November. But overall, that is my assumption that we should be falling lower because the Bank of England stopped their buyback program. All right. And this pattern also <laughs> does not look very, very bullish. But I did show you a case in the past where we did have a green candle and we ended up having a green day the next day we bounced and then the day after that we gapped down so i am most likely going to buy more puts tomorrow if we get to 363 364 for late november um so yeah there's that for the spy it you know we broke below a new low waked up we're holding above in the candle body now let's go ahead and take a look at the nasdaq all right, for the NASDAQ, <clears throat> you can see that we are trading very close to the 618% FIB, very, very important level, as well as the 260 level. We also closed two times below the prior low that we made, and we just closed and made a new low today. So we are getting very, very close to this zone of support. But overall, this, <laughs> this setup is not bullish, and it's very, very difficult to try to go long here. It does make sense if you are a bull to start scaling into like longer term calls but the immediate momentum is clearly bearish um the over the lower level of the bollinger band is also sharply falling lower so granted tomorrow we could have a green day that's completely irrelevant to what i'm trying to say right now overall i do think that we should come and come to these zones um and then basically once we get here i mean it would like we've been seeing you know it would it would take something important on the macro side to hold these levels of support and then below 260 below 257 we can see 251 very very easily so the momentum overall is very very bearish the bank of england didn't report <laughs> something bullish for the stock market obviously they they said that the buyback program on the pensions is going to stop um that is pretty crazy so it's very very difficult to be short-term bullish so if there is a bullish move tomorrow then you have to be bearish but then with cpi data there can be a lot of things that they're going to play around with but that's why right now for immediate swings the safest thing to do is to buy something about um a few weeks out at least but that's that for the nasdaq let's take a look at the iwm so obviously the iwm was holding support it was outperforming uh the spy and the nasdaq and um in in the morning the iwm was showing the most strength and based off of the strength in the iwm it helped pull up the spy which helped pull up the nasdaq 
so now we can take a look at the dollar obviously the dollar continued up this is basically the first day after um you know crossing above so basically we have another day at least where we should continue upwards so let's see if we can get a retest of this uh upper wick here at 113.8 and um basically what i mean by the crossover on the macd is usually when we cross above on the macd there is at least two days where the price continues in that direction that's generally what's supposed to happen so let's see if that is the case and oh so to touch on that we know that a dollar a bullish dollar <clears throat> basically when the dollar is doing well the stock market falls basically all right so that's what we're looking at and the 30-year bonds are holding some sort of a bottom here we broke below the lows we held the support and we printed a green candle right so in the short term this is showing that this support is still holding that's why i bought into puts for the end of november <laughs> so, let's, so let's see if that works out the other play that we made was early november by do calls so the reason for that is the chinese market just made new lows and we just fell there is obviously a lot more room to fall to the downside on the chinese market right that's completely irrelevant but we got into early november calls because i don't think so essentially the chinese market the chinese government has control over uh, the stock prices so they can easily implement another uh, essentially i don't believe that they're going to um allow the market to collapse right because we remember a few weeks ago they were urging banks to <laughs> buy back stock and now we're at a new low so i don't think that they're going to um destroy uh retails the like stocks portfolio right so for that reason we can see that baidu is very very overextended to the downside it's not a hundred percent guarantee because the baidu isn't an etf it's not a a trillion dollar company so this lower level of the bollinger band thing does not apply to this as clean as it does to the other things that we watch but um basically we are very very overextended to the downside on baidu so <laughs> so basically i mean like this is a very very good trade in my opinion Our early november we have a lot of time on this but yes we can easily have another big red day we can fall down to like 104 105 that would put us around the zone of where the nasdaq is and um i mean overall i mean this is just very very overextended even if we get a bounce to 110 111 tomorrow those calls should be up at least 30 or 40 percent but basically we can see that when we are opened and close basically when we close this far out usually the next day we have some sort of a bounce that coupled with the fact that the chinese market just made new lows uh it just makes sense to try to go long for a little bit especially for early november calls that coupled with the fact that we're already short late november um puts <laughs> we have late november puts on the spy and we're already holding on to nvidia puts so basically we can add a little bit of exposure to the long side for early november uh, i think that that's a solid trade to make overall that is my analysis for the overall market i hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like comment subscribe do all that good stuff and i will see you guys tomorrow thank you